Hello, I'm James Randi, and I'd like to tell you briefly the history of Uri Geller. It's a long story, but we'll cut it down in length, mercifully. Thirty-five years ago, he started to tell the world the story that he was a genuine psychic. But he's now decided to make a reversal of that. Let's examine it. Now, back in 1975, in my book, The Truth About Uri Geller, I gave Mr. Geller the opportunity to do a withdrawal from his claims that he had genuine psychic powers. I said that if he did that, I would set him up with a prominent agent in New York City so that he could become a practicing magician, an illusionist. And he certainly would get international tours out of that. He could have made an honest living from that point on, but he ignored that offer entirely. Instead, now, just recently, within the last couple of months, he's decided to do a reversal, to withdraw from his claim that he has genuine psychic powers. Well, Mr. Geller, that won't work. It's too late now. There are too many academic careers from universities all around the world of people who have been affected negatively. A short list, Russell Targ and Hal Putoff from Stanford Research Institute at one time, Wilbur Franklin, John Hasted, and John Taylor, Ted Baston, Andrea Puharich. Oh, the list goes on and on. These are academics who chose to believe that Geller was telling them the truth. He said he was. He said, I'm not a magician. I've never done magic tricks. I can't do magic tricks. I've always been the real thing. I have genuine supernatural powers. And they naively chose to believe him and their careers were negatively affected, in some cases very seriously. Now, you can forget the teeny boppers. The teeny boppers sort of went along with Geller. They were titillated by him, and he probably made a good living from their support. But they're not the important people. The important agencies here are the national governments, other organizations, universities, research agencies, that spent millions of dollars to investigate what was known as the Geller effect. They chose to believe that Geller was not lying to them when he said he had genuine psychic powers. He even said at one point that he got his powers, I hope you're ready for this, from the planet Huba. Who knows where Huba is? It's in some extra galactic area, I don't know. But he said that an angel of some sort appeared to him when he was a mere child in his garden and gave him these mystical powers and he found out that he could bend spoons with his mind. What a load of nonsense. I can't believe that anyone would accept this, but many people obviously did. Now again, we can forget the teeny boppers. It's the millions of dollars that were spent by agencies and by people who thought that he was genuine. They chose to believe him. Now he finds himself between a rock and a hard place. It's exactly where he deserves to be. Mr. Geller, you deserve this. And I will read from the closing words of my book. Somewhat out of character, I will read from Holy Scripture. This is quoted in the closing of my book about Uri Geller. Stand now with thine enchantments, with the multitudes of thy sorceries, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. That's from Isaiah 47, verse 12. You're stuck with it, Mr. Geller. Lots of luck.